Okay, we are back live at Hadoop Summit. Uh, this is uh, the end of day two. We're getting down to the home stretch here. This is Silicon Angle's uh, continuous coverage of uh, the big data world, the center of all the action, Silicon Valley uh, in San Jose, California, where we are having the first Hortonworks event of Hadoop Summit. Last year was run by Yahoo, uh, where, our, where our guest was an employee uh, actually the day before last year's event. Um, I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly here at Silicon Angle Wiki Bonds Cube. Uh, Eric um, Baldish Wheeler. Okay, got it. You were the uh, CEO of Hortonworks as part of the spin out and one of the co founders. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had almost all the co founders on except for Suresh, uh, as not come on. We'll we try to get him later, but uh, we wanted to get all the founders on, in particular uh, you, because you were involved actively. You were the uh, acting CEO during that, and, mm -hmm. and publicly we're pretty vocal, like, hey, you know, I'm not <laughs> a long-term CEO, I'm a tech guy. Remember you, your speech on stage last year, very humble. Um, lots changed since that year. Mm -hmm. So, We've learned a lot in the year. One, 80 people now, mm -hmm. growing like crazy. 80, growing fast. Um, what's it like? Tell us what, what your year was like. Well, I mean, it's just, I think I've learned more every week than I learned in a year anywhere else. We've uh, gone from 24 employees to 80. We've built out the product, opened up a couple new open source projects, and Bari was something that had been started, but you know, we'd, just, we'd never really taken it uh, to production anywhere, so we've added a lot of new capabilities, and now we're taking that out as part of HDP. We've built uh, out all these connections with talent and uh, putting that in our product, so opened up a lot of different doors. Um, we've built out <laughs> sales, marketing, training, um, support, uh, and consulting. It's just, it's a wild year. So right. a lot of people don't know, well, a lot of people might not know, some people do know, but might not know that uh, Hortonworks was a big part of Yahoo's, the core team was a big part of Yahoo's Hadoop operation. Mm -hmm. Yahoo still has a, a bunch of people over there doing amazing work. But all, all that expertise, it wasn't like it was like three guys in a garage, no. or eight guys just kind of like, hey, let's do, get in the Hadoop business. Mm -hmm. You guys have been there, done that, and, and kind of had a shadow over you guys because Yahoo kind of wasn't stepping up and taking a lot of public credit for the Hadoop movement um, outside of the, you know, the industry. But you guys did a lot of the work over there. I, I wouldn't say there was a shadow over us. I would say that if anybody who was in the Hadoop community knew what was going on, Yahoo took it from a prototype to what it is today. We put uh, about 300 person years into Hadoop development over uh, the first uh, six years of the project. So, you know, I think it, you know, that cast a pretty big invisible shadow. We've been running the summit for five years. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but we certainly felt that, you know, a year ago it had reached a point where there was a market for Hadoop way beyond Yahoo and that there was an opportunity for us to take what we've been doing at Yahoo, take it to a much wider market and frankly, uh, you know, build a business that was self-sustaining that would then bring value uh, to a wider community and to Yahoo. So as the new employees it's come it's into really Hortonworks, win -win. as the new employees come into Hortonworks, what's the culture like? I mean, mm -hmm. describe the culture at Hortonworks. I mean, Rob was on the Cube was great. You mm -hmm. can see in his eyes, he's competitive. People have a fire <laughs> in their belly at Hortonworks. Well, of course, is that the culture? I mean, and and how do you get the new employees in doc? Uh, Dominating that culture. Well, we, we have our manifesto, which is on the website. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, really stand out. I would say first and foremost, you know, relentlessly optimistic. Right? We've, you know, open source is an interesting game. All right? There's nobody. You know, when people leave your team, they continue to make your product better. Right? Your competitors are working feverishly to make your product better as well. <laughs> right? So. It's, you know, so we really believe that a key to this thing is being optimistic, looking for, you know, the solu looking for win-wins and looking to understand how we can do things with everyone in the community. And we're also very customer-centric, right? And that's very important, right? And ultimately, if you don't have customers, you don't have a business. So we're very focused on outcomes, we're very focused on delivery. Um, you know, we're very focused on teamwork, right? Ultimately, uh, you know, we want people who understand again that, that you know if you're trying to build communities, you, you, you got to make space for other people to succeed. So there's a lot of that. Um, let's see other things. You know, I've been in a lot of places that don't leave time for uh, for family or life outside of work. You know, if you don't have your health, if you don't have your family, you're not. You know, this is a marathon, not a sprint. So we try to make time for people outside of work. We're not a cult. We think that people should have a life outside of work. Right, which 
you know, finding that balance in a startup can be challenging because <laughs> yeah. there's more to get done. Than, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, you guys it. are like, it is marathon. Open source is ultimately a mm -hmm. marathon where everyone's mm -hmm. watching. And it's yeah. all out in the open. Um, even more with social media and, and connectedness. Um, have you guys looked, seen any changes in the collaboration side of the business? I mean, open source has always been collaborative. Yeah. You had Usenet, you had all kinds of online tools, but now everyone's online, everyone's connected. Has that changed the speed and some of the dynamics? Oh, I mean, tremendously. I mean, we're working real time with people all over the world. Um, you know, you, it is, in the, I mean, the whole open source movement, I think, has just been facilitated by that, right? I mean, we're, we've got very simple central infrastructure that's just moving this thing forward, you know, and we're learning. You know, I mean, the thing, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I mean, the thing with open source is almost the failures are as interesting as the successes, right? And so you can put out this piece of software, a thousand people will try a thousand different things, and some of them will fork it and take it different directions. You'll see a few successes, and those are great, you can pull those back, but also you could fail much more quickly, right? <laughs> a lot of you, you see, you know, there's this group exploration of all the things that don't work, and so you, you learn a lot faster because you can try things in parallel in a way that you can't do it if it's a closed product. The good right? news and is failure is accepted and, and, and people understand, especially developers, understand that you know, when you write code in particular or try even startups, that yeah. is part of the learning. It is, well, and I mean, it's, I, I should be careful when I, Eric said that open source software is all about failure. <laughs> I don't want to leave that message. <laughs> um, but when, if you think about our. Uh, no, that's, not, that's not, I don't think, we, we don't want to put that message out. It's not true, but it's, it's, it's about iteration, it's about community. It, and yeah, and if you think about the whole Jeffrey Moore talk about crossing the chasm, right, there really are these two different constituencies. And there's a lot of people who don't want, any, who want nothing other than to pull their bits off Apache add their own special secret sauce and just try the new thing every week, right? And so, you know, Apache supports that. We work with those guys every day. Some of our mm. biggest partners are people that just have their own dev teams and we're learning from each other. Then on the other hand, you know, there's people that want to consume something tested and stable and that's what distributions like our HTTP are for. Mm -hmm. right? let's, let's dig into that a little bit. So you've got a product out, I think we believe it's just tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, talk a little bit about, well, first of all, you know, why did you guys feel the need to really create your own distribution, and specifically I love to talk about Ambari and really uh -huh, the role sure. that plays, because of course, you know, monitoring, managing your Hadoop uh, deployment is, is critical mm -hmm. and one of the areas that a lot of uh, early adopters were struggling with. So maybe we can talk about first kind of the why you felt it was necessary and then let's dig into Ambari a little bit. Sure, why the Hortonworks data platform? Um, well, uh, I mean, the key thing for us is to provide, as I said, a, a good, uh, simple experience for our customers where they get a dependable product that works. And for that, it's, it's all about integration, which means you want to test thing A with thing B with thing C. So you assemble a stack and you test it uh, just the same way that you see you know, Red Hat doing that or any of the other Linux distributions or, you know. So it's just, it's really about testability, repeatability, stability, and deployability. That's why you have a distribution. Mm -hmm. And given that we're very interested in moving the projects forward and you know, we needed to have a vehicle that, where we could, you know, package, you know, the, our learnings and put it out to the market. So that's why we're in the distribution mm -hmm. business. In terms of Ambari, um, I'm, I mean, I, I think it is key, right? If there's one thing, all of the sort of, you know, if you look at Yahoo, we had a sort of tool set that we'd built up over a decade mm -hmm. uh, for managing clustered applications. And when Hadoop was built up, we used that proprietary toolkit for everything from installing to monitoring. And that stuff isn't in the market. So a lot of people were struggling, right? right? So, I mean, a lot of what we've heard, you know, talking to customers is, well, I like what Hadoop can do, mm -hmm. but what is it doing, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And how do I start? So, you know, we just tried to take the best practices that we'd seen mm -hmm. and wrap those up into a consumable package. Mm -hmm. So that's what Ambari is. So on the deployment side, we're using open source, you know, we're using the Puppet um, language in a, in a scripting system, and that's something that a lot of IT shops are very comfortable with, and when we talk to people, they, they liked that approach. And then on the monitoring side, people uh, with Hadoop experience, who'd sort of, a lot of them had come down and said, well, had sort of picked uh, Nagios and Ganglia, which are again, two very popular open source projects that handle alerts and then real-time monitoring. 
So what we did was just try to take these best practices and uh, wrap them up into a consumable form. Mm -hmm. And that's what Ambari is. And that's sort of where we're starting the conversation. And then we want to get that out there, solve some problems, and you know, we're going to keep iterating. Mm -hmm. I was talking, we were talking with uh, Sean and um, Sean Conley, um, the uh, corporate mm -hmm. strategy guy, and he's talking about the team. Uh -huh. We want to add some more Clydesdales, is his direct <laughs> quote. He's got the good, the good expressions ringing doorbells, Clydesdales. He's got the he's got the good mm. uh, good rap of the cube. But I want to ask you about your as you expand your team because you've been there from uh -huh. the beginning. Um, what is Ari Zilka's role as the chief product officer? You have a mm -hmm. you have the VP of engineering. You got a chief strat. You got a got a bunch of guys who've been working together before. Um, has he been part of the uh, the team? Uh, he's, he's been new. part of the conversation pretty much since our inception. He has right. been. Yeah, we were talking to him about the possibility of joining us uh, for quite a while, and we were lucky the stars aligned and that worked out. Now he's somebody that I've uh, known for a number of years, as have a number of other people on our team. And so his role is uh, pre-sales and product management, right? So he helps us define what's in a release. He works very closely with our customers, and he's really, really good at you know, understanding a customer's you know, set of problems and tools and identifying how our technologies can solve that, right? He's, you know, he's got an incredible breadth of experience, especially in the financials and retail sector. And he worked uh, at Walmart for quite a while, and his last company, where he was CEO and then CTO, was um, Terracotta, which uh, is heavily used in the financial sector, right, and also in retail for sort of data acceleration. So he's going to be in charge of the roadmap too. Oh, yeah, he's d very deeply involved in the roadmap. Very deeply involved in sort of figuring out what we can do, you know, what the customer needs. Right? He he's got on a which great intuition, because he's used all these things. Okay, got mm -hmm. it, cool. Yeah, so he's going to come on later, we want to make sure we yeah. drill down on him. I just followed him on Twitter, so. <laughs> in terms of, uh, so, you know, the op open source world, uh, in terms of, uh, what can we expect in terms of product releases and, and mm -hmm. up, up, upgrade cycles, and how do you kind of uh, view that, and uh, you know, is that a yearly thing? Is that a more iterative approach? Uh, how do you uh, approach that? Well, I mean, so, one of the one of the values that a distribution vendor can bring is uh, some amount of predictability. Mm -hmm. So the HTTP one platform will iterate every quarter, and you know that is something that we can you know that everyone can count on, and it will take you know all the bug fixes for the problems that we've encountered in the field and innovations that have been tested, and we can bring into that platform without disruption. So that's the kind of you know, predictable train, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, the uh, other side of it is, you know, the sort of bleeding edge of all these projects can be very wild west. As I said, there's a lot of experimentation and some failure happening there. Mm. Uh, 2.0 is an alpha, um, and that means it's being tried in a very few sort of bleeding edge places. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little hard to predict when that will close. We are, you know, as I said, using it in some places where people really value the technology, but it's hard to predict when it'll kind of converge and meet all of the acceptance criteria of the people we're doing those tests with. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, guesstimation, I would say that it should be, I'm, I'm expecting it to sort of go GA early next year would mm -hmm. at a guess. It may you know, it might be earlier, right? But mm -hmm. you know Well yeah, I mean we're looking ahead. I mean we're mm -hmm. you just went GA and, and, and version one, we don't want to look look past that. I mean that's a big right. milestone. No. It is and, and you know I mean I one again it's a stack. GA of a component is different from when does it make sense to sort of mm -hmm. say if you value stability now is the time that it's worth it. Mm -hmm. I think what we're gonna look to do is take it into very specific use cases where people value the new features. I mean, the two things that 2.0 really brings are a scale, mm -hmm. right? When we started the project, I mean, this this project has we've been working at it for three years inside Yahoo and inside Hortonworks, and people from around the community have contributed as well. Um, but scale was a real focus. You know, we wanted to be able to go from 4,000 node clusters of the machines that were available three years ago to 10,000 node clusters of the machines that are available uh, this year and next. Mm -hmm. So that's more like an order of magnitude if you think yeah. about it, because the machine, the Moore's Law is working right. in the background. <laughs> yep. so, so big ambitious jump in terms of how much storage you can manage, how much compute you can do in a cluster. So there aren't too many people who are frustrated that they can only run 4,000 nodes. Mm -hmm. But the people who want to go higher are very serious about that, <laughs> right? Because that'll have big operational return for people like Yahoo and Facebook and, 
uh, some uh, a small a select list of others. Mm -hmm. um, then the other, you know, short term feature is just some improvements in performance. But frankly, you know, 1.0 is pretty good and incrementally getting better as well. So then the rest of it is sort of what does this enable? It enables new frameworks, and I think mm -hmm. that's where the you know real excitement is going to be in a year. Mm -hmm. Around it, the MapReduce 2.0 and the, right those Yarn kind of specifically, Yarn, yep. and I mean Federation as well. Yeah, but Yarn will let us. Everyone on the show wants to know how am I going to combine Hadoop with real-time analytics? Yeah. Right. And Yarn does not in and of itself solve that, but it provides a framework in which we can start to do those experimentation. That mm -hmm. experimentation we were talking about right. earlier. Right. It'll let all the different actors who have a good idea plug their uh, new compute frameworks into Hadoop, into the same Hadoop clusters, and then let you try a lot of different things without changing the kernel, mm -hmm. right? So, because we're moving sort of the programming model up to a place where users can plug that in per job. Mm -hmm. Eric, we got to get, we're getting the hook here. Eric Wallace from the CTO <laughs> of Hortonworks, co-founder. Final uh, comment I'd like you to leave the audience with is, obviously you guys are growing, you've been very successful pedaling as fast as you can, getting to the point where you're right up number two with Cloudera, quote, in the pure, like all pure play, I guess, um, distribution, doing great work. Um, what are you looking for in the team as you grow and expand, share with the folks, key open positions, key things to fill, oh, product. Great question. <laughs> product map, go ahead. Well, so uh, as, as CTO, I'm, you know, Sean's looking for Clydesdales because we've got a lot of work to do. I'm looking for Dragon Slayers, right? We've got to think about what comes next and really, you know, we've got lots of really interesting problems to solve as we take these, as we solve the 2.0. I mean, there's all these different dimensions. So I'm looking for the sort of tech leaders who can work with us to solve this next big set of problems. You guys are doing great work. Obviously, you're not uh, slacking. You had a big investment. Um, we hear more money's coming. Um, we hear you guys are well funded. Obviously mm -hmm. the business deals Absolutely. are going on. Congratulations, what a year. Hortonworks, CTO, co-founder, uh, Eric. But thanks for joining theCUBE. We'll be right back with Thank our next guest much. after this short break.